Hey, I'm Trey. I have two stories for you today. The first story shows how a serial killer can be part of your own family. I think I got a few of those sprinkled in my family. The second story is about a killer that was responsible for scores of murdered people and used the killer's position to go undetected for years. You might want to stick around in the end to see how these stories unfold. If you enjoy more stories such as these, I upload new content every Tuesday and Thursday. If you have any comments about the video or channel, please leave them in the comment section because I'm always interested in your opinion. So if you're ready, let's get started. Martha Needle was born in the country of Australia in 1863. We're going way back now. Martha's maiden name was Martha Charles. Her father passed away when she was very young. Her mother, Mary Charles, remarried Daniel Foran and they gave birth to two additional children. They were very poor and lived in a tiny house. The house was too small for the five of them which added to their overall frustration. Since Martha happened to be the stepchild, she was also treated as one. She was known to be beaten regularly with a stick or a rope for the smallest transgressions. Unfortunately, being a stepchild always sucks. When Martha turned 13 years old, she was sexually assaulted by her stepfather. She grew tired of the sexual and physical abuse, understandably, so Martha fled home and found work as a housekeeper. Martha met a man by the name of Henry Needle, and when she became 18 years old, the two of them became married. Together they birthed three children, names Mabel, Elise, and May. After several years passed, the relationship began to have problems, as most do. It was alleged, but not confirmed, that Henry was very jealous and possessive. To compensate for his insecurities, he would beat Martha often, not surprisingly. In 1885, Mabel, Martha's daughter, died abruptly by an unknown illness. It was said that before Mabel passed, she was extremely lethargic. She remained bedridden and suffered from diarrhea. Martha collected 100 pounds from a life insurance policy that she had on Mabel. That doesn't seem like much, but 2010's equivalent is approximately $40,000 US. Four years later, Martha's husband died suddenly and unexpectedly in October of 1889. Several months later, Martha's child Elise also died in a similar manner, which was abruptly and unexpected. Not too long after the last child, May, had also died in a similar manner, but no details were given on when or the circumstances surrounding it. The doctors were unable to determine the cause of death. Martha spent the majority of her insurance claim money on an elaborate family burial plot. Martha visited the plot regularly. She would deliver fresh flowers then sit and talk to her loved ones. Martha met a man by the name of Louis Junkin who was half owner of a horse saddle business with his brothers. The two began a date and the relationship became serious against the wishes of Lewis's two brothers, Odo and Herman. It was alleged that the brothers felt uneasy about Martha dating Lewis, but had no evidence to substantiate their feelings. I'm sure we can take a guess, right? Both brothers attempted to stop the engagement between her and Lewis to no avail. It was believed that Lewis felt that his brothers were envious of their relationship. A year later, Lewis died suddenly which was diagnosed as typhoid. Before Lewis passed, he and Martha had moved quite a distance away from his brother Herman. So one day, Herman decided to travel to handle his late brother's business affairs and then visit Martha since he would be in the general area. After Herman completed his business in town, he then went to Martha's home and ate a meal prepared by her. As soon as he was finished eating, Henry suddenly became sick. Henry recovered and the following morning he ate a full breakfast also prepared by Martha. Henry began to have violent stomach cramps. Two days later Henry recovered again and had lunch prepared by Martha. Henry went to see the doctor and he believed that Henry was suffering from food poisoning. I would be like, hey lady just tell me you want me to leave don't feed me bad food. The doctor was able to get a sample of Henry's vomit and had it tested at a lab. The results were found to contain arsenic. Henry contacted the authorities and told them of the situation. 
The police requested that Henry set up a trap by requesting Martha to prepare a meal for him. Henry did what was asked of him. He returned to Martha's home and professed to be hungry. Hey Martha, I'd love to get some of that food of yours. M Martha began whipping up another meal along with a cup of tea. The police were waiting outside of her home and hiding while waiting for the signal from Henry. When Henry blew a whistle, it alerted the police to come in and they did. Henry grabbed a cup of tea as Martha attempted to unsuccessfully swat it out of his hand. The teacup was turned over to the police and the content was analyzed. The tea contained enough arsenic to kill five people. Thanks Martha. The police exhumed the bodies of Lewis Junkin, Henry Needle, which was her first husband, and Martha's three daughters, May, Elise, and Mabel. And autopsies were done. They were all found to have died from arsenic poisoning. The takeaway from this story is don't date anyone whose entire family mysteriously died. Martha was put on trial and found guilty and sentenced to death. She was hung by the neck until she died. Alexander Serkacek was born 1970 in the country of Belisarius when it was still a part of the USSR. He had two siblings, a brother and a sister. Alexander's father was an alcoholic who often beat his wife and children. Eventually, the father was fed up with the entire family and then abandoned them for another woman. Thanks, Dad. I love you, too. Alexander served in the armed forces of the USSR before he was demobilized in November of 1991. After the demobilization, he returned home, where he worked as a driver for a local company. In March 1992, Alexander was recruited by the police as an officer. He graduated with honors. Shortly after, he got married and had two children. Later, he acquired the rank of senior police lieutenant. He started off by stealing anything of value he can get his hands on. Alexander stole everything from cars to personal property to weapons and the money. Alexander just wasn't happy with stealing valuables of money. He loved to exert his power over anyone that opposed anything that he did or said. April 2000, he picked up a 21-year-old hitchhiker by the name of Helen Boltag. The record states that they engaged in sexual intercourse. During sexual intercourse, the victim just so happened to lose consciousness. Then he decided to strangle her to death, douse her with gasoline, and light her body on fire after taking off her jewelry and cash. I mean, what the F was that? How do you go from having sex with a total stranger to murdering her, then setting her body on fire? June 2000, Alexander went to the apartment of his 31-year-old mistress by the name of Savannah Prasaka. They got into a verbal dispute because Alexander would not divorce his wife over her. He then strangled her with a TV cable. He then staged her suicide by hanging her in the bathroom. This guy is brutal. It's obvious she had feelings for him, but he absolutely had no feelings whatsoever for her. All of her cash and jewelry were taken from the apartment. July 2000, Alexander met a 19-year-old woman by the name of Lydumala Kolag. He then took her to a romantic secluded location in the woods to view the local river one evening. The record states that they engaged in consensual sex. Afterwards, Alexander beat her severely, strangled her with a rope, and dumped her body into the river. Before dumping the woman's body, he took all of her valuables and the keys to her apartment. Later, he went to her apartment and stole the rest of her valuables. September 2002, with an accomplice, Alexander and his 18-year-old nephew, Dmitry Barkov, drove around for hours searching for a suitable victim to rob. They eventually found a parked vehicle occupied by two people near the roadside. Alexander brandished the stolen pistol and approached the car. When he actually got to the vehicle, he then knocked on the driver's side door. Before the driver could even acknowledge Alexander's presence, he shot the driver in the head through the windshield, but he survived. Then he and his nephew dragged the male victim out of the car and beat him to death. The passenger was a female who tried to escape, but was caught, beaten, and dragged to Alexander's car. Next, he and his nephew, Dimitri, took turns raping her before Alexander strangled her with a towing cable. They robbed the victim's bodies, tied the corpses with cable, and left them in the trunk of their car. February 2006, 
Alexander left his wife home after having a verbal dispute. He decided to go to his best friend's female's mistress's home. Alexander's friend was not at the house during the time. Alexander asked if he could have a drink and she obliged. After several hours of drinking alcohol, he beat her up and raped her. After Alexander was done, he strangled her to death with her bra. The body was left in the bathroom. He burglarized the apartment and fled the scene. While the police were investigating the last female's death, Alexander had left his fingerprints on the alcohol bottle in the apartment. When he was questioned by his police colleagues, his story was inconsistent. The police then searched his apartment and found stolen items and weapons from other murdered victims. After intense questioning by the authorities, he then confessed to a total of 12 murders, 11 of which were females. DNA evidence was able to confirm six of these homicides. The police believed that he was involved with at least six additional murders involving women. They all matched his modus operandi. They were all raped, strangled to death, and their bodies were burned or tossed in the river. Alexander would not confess to those murders, so the police didn't have enough evidence to charge him for those. Alexander was found guilty and sentenced to death. He was put to death in November 2007 by firing squad. Good for him. If you enjoy more stories such as these, click on one of the suggested videos above. I upload new content every Tuesday and Thursday. God bless and stay safe.